Hello there. Hello. Um, today I'm joined by Jack and Dennis. Um, if you've worked with us uh, on, on Metadax at any point in time, you're uh, familiar with these two superstars. Um, the three of us today are going to talk a bit about the top 10 features um, in Metadax. Um, most of which aren't metadata cleaning actually. So we want to talk a bit, a bit about what we've added to Metadact over the last year or so, and how that's going to improve um, working uh, on emails as well as uh, general workflows within the firm. Uh, anything you want to add, Jack and Dennis, before we kick off? No, I mean, this should be um, pretty exciting. Um, I know metadata can be a kind of, um, not the most exciting topic to always talk about, but um, I think as we go through this top 10 list, it'll um, open your eyes into what else you can accomplish as well when you're going through that process. Lovely. Stepping through, we are gonna start with metadata cleaning because this is, uh, when I was checking with Jack and Dennis on, on customer feedback that they've heard, Clean and reattach is one of the first things we did and still remains one of the favorite things for our customers. Um, Are you clean sharing? Reattach, I am not sharing, am I? I thought I was, <laughs> yeah. I thought I was. Uh, <laughs> sorry Friday. about that. <laughs> is. There we go. Um, so Clean and Reattach is one of those um, basic, uh, very simple bits of workflow that we've added to metadata. metadata. Uh, it's it's as simple as uh, clicking a button, getting all of your attachments cleaned well before the email goes out. Um, our feedback's been, and, and our customer feedback always has been that it's it's an excellent way to preview all the documents. So you have a high level of confidence uh, before the emails go out. Yeah, I think um, more more uh, majority of our customers love this functionality and a good real life um, example. Here is, let's say, when an attorney forwards an email from a mobile device. Um, you know, working um, with a mobile device, you really, you know, sometimes you're not aware that you're sending documents with, you know, metadata things like comments or track changes. And with mobile alerts, um, you are notified when these types of metadata are present in your document. And again, which gives you that ability to respond. Okay, just utilizing your thumbs, you should be able to interact and provide inputs on how the MetaDoc server should be handling these types of metadata. So I think this is a very great feature. Which sort of sets us up very well to uh, how we want to talk about the mobile, uh, working off of mobile devices. So um, not everybody has the luxury of sitting at your desk when you're walk, working and working on a lot of the feedback that we've had um, we've we've extended uh, our our desktop experience to um, mobile alerts as well. If you've worked on a mobile device with Metadact, you've uh, almost always seen uh, this in some way or the other. For people who have yet to uh, work with Metadact, um, we have an out of band notification that comes back to you, which you can then load up on your mobile devices to uh, to interact. So um, this along with the clean and reattach, which we were talking about, sort of fills out that experience uh, through and through. Um, this, is, uh, this is above and beyond all of the desktop interaction you can do. This is a catch-all um, environment, really. Yeah, and I, I think this is a huge um, value piece as well, because we all know when you're, when you're working from a mobile device, um, even if you're looking at a document, we, I hope you're using the native uh, Word application when looking at a document on your mobile device, but um, there are third-party apps out there that can um, look at Word documents and, and view them. And, and from our experience and the research we've done, um, sometimes you may not see everything if you're using some type of third-party app to view a document on your mobile device. And by having something like this mobile alerts functionality in place, when you send something out, you have that confidence in place that it's going to, uh, you know, whether alert you to those important alertable types of metadata, like track changes or comments that maybe you didn't see in there and, and can, uh, you know, get them cleaned appropriately or, um, you know, cancel the sending um, totally to take a second look at what's going on there. 
Exactly. Um, and incidentally, the screenshot you're seeing up here right now is is actually grabbed off of our upcoming release, um, um, which is the 22nd of September. We have added support for password protected zip files as well. So um, another way to interact when you send a um, secured file out, uh, you, you, you get mobile alerts to interact with uh, with the system and to provide passwords, for instance. So this is this is just upcoming. Not you, you wouldn't see it uh, if you already had MetaTax coming in September. At number eight, we were looking at how uh, we, we've gotten feedback on how um, we want to keep workflows as clean as possible. Um, we, we, ev everybody works with the uh, on documents straight from the DMS. As you can see, um, we've always had this uh, very strong integration with DMSs. Uh, as you can see, you can see all of the uh, Litera products uh, on the right-click menu in the new iManage web uh, application here. Um, and a metadata cleaning is built in here, so you don't need to pull this off of um, off the uh, iManage in this instance. You don't need to clear, pull it off of iManage to clean. You can clean it in place, and and uh, either the document or a version. And extending from here, um, you can also uh, directly attach uh, files directly from the DMS or on your desktop, clean it directly from the DMS. So. All of these things sort of avoid you having to maintain different local copies of the file just to send them out, and uh, that that I, that is that uh, keeps you in line with a lot of the policies in place. Yeah, I think our uh, customers really love this feature, especially the right-click integration. Most of the feedback that we get when uh, we're uh, enabling this functionality is that you know they never have to leave their DMS client and go somewhere else, uh, you know, in order to clean or or um, remove the metadata out of these uh, DMS documents because they have that right-click integration. They could do it right within the DMS client. Um, you know, they could save it back to DMS, email it, email it, or you know, send it as an attachment. So all of these features are, are really um, appreciated by, by uh, customers that are using these DMS clients. Yeah, it may seem like a, a simple thing, but um, you know, improving workflows of users is, is something we all hang our hats on. And, and this, is, this is a little um, piece that makes your, the overall user experience um, that much simpler. Before we move off, uh, you'll notice uh, there are there are unfinished pieces of fiction fictional work that Jack does over the weekend. He's saving it in his DMS. <laughs> it's, it's his upcoming novel. Um, so yeah, that's the side gig. Uh, <laughs> moving on, we we've worked with enough uh, lawyers and we've heard enough feedback um, from we're all we're all humans at work. We we're all working um, long hours, um, important work, a lot of stress. The last thing we want is to add more. So. We want to work with a lot of the user uh, feedback. We want to look at how, which bits of um, workflows have the most friction. We want to make life easier. So we're already starting to move away from just metadata cleaning here. Um, this is part, you, you would have seen a host of these functional functions on the sensitive data handling side of things. Um, it's there as a safeguard um, or as a hard stop for certain kinds of behavior. Uh, this we, we all make mistakes when you're in a hurry when you're working on uh, important emails and what we want to do with metadata uh, sensitive data handling uh, pro uh, feature uh, set is, is to sort of help step in and just just ask once again are, are you sure you want to do something like this and as you can see most of these scenarios are usually kick in when you're in a hurry and when you're when you're sending out uh, sensitive data yeah, as VJ mentioned, you know, we, we usually joke around this uh, when we're doing some demos that you know, this functionality prevents those oops moments when, you know, whether you're collaborating internally or, um, you know, replying to uh, external recipients or external uh, clients, you know, by warning you or alerting you um, bef after the, the send event, that gives you the, you know, the uh, uh, ability to think twice, hey, I might really need to reply all to this. Uh, we have uh, it contains uh, an external domain, or it could prevent you from sending a specific file type, which is also um, a feature that's included in the in the sensitive data handling. So I think uh, some of the feedback that we get is really uh, it's it's good that we can warn the senders or prevent something from from happening if it's uh, intended to. Uh, or if it's uh, violating a certain policy within the firm. So I think this is a very, very good feature. 
Yeah, and, uh, the only other thing I'll add is that that last bullet there with with kind of splitting out BCC recipients is is one of the things we added. So just kind of making sure that the um, you know recipients um, are split out. So your two NCCs have, you know see what that information and the um, they don't see who's BCC'd on the email to prevent that that situation where you know you click reply all and to those. BCC recipients and now everybody knows where the emails went. So it's again, these are little things that I think um, we all think about or we all try to avoid um, doing when when going about our email workflows. But but having these alertable functionalities or features um, just gives you that uh, extra peace of mind. I know for me personally, I use the autocomplete override um, because I did that once, uh, <laughs> sent it to the wrong person, and I'll never do it again. So. Uh, <laughs> Same um, here. <laughs> exactly. Just little things that just make life uh, a little bit easier. And one of the things with the sensitive data handling suite is that we've got six bullet points here. And these six bullet points are just an attempt by me to sort of compress all of the things we do. And we want to keep adding here. There will always be these edge cases that we want to handle. So this is always a growing uh, set of functionality that we will be focusing on. Oh, yeah. So one of the uh, other things we want to work on a, or talk about is uh, how we want to extend uh, convenience of working without necessarily exposing how you do work. So uh, w when you are working with your clients, uh, we, w we want to keep track changes as far as possible. Uh, this is basically uh, when, when you're looking at collaborative uh, matters. You want to keep uh, keep all of the information and all of the value added up, up, uh, up in front of center. But you don't necessarily want to ex um, expose how you who's doing it or um, how it was done or how much time it took. That kind of information is not really um, applicable to the matter at hand. So some of the things, uh, one of the things we do here is specifically to remove um, and trim out information without necessarily removing it completely. In this scenario, we're looking at removing um, the the timestamps and the names really a lot associated with track changes. Yeah, and I, you know, this kind of brings up a you know a story that that um, I've used in the past and that I hear multiple times is a lot of the times firms when working on documents, you know, um, a client they may be working with is paying for the expertise of let's say a, maybe a partner at the firm to create these documents. But we all we all know that um, you know it's a, usually a team effort for these particular documents, and as you have track changes on there, everybody who makes a change obviously is stamped here. Um, and while we do uh, can remove that information, another thing that's that's in play here is being able to change that information. So instead of maybe necessarily having um, specific users listed here. We have, MetaDoc does have the ability to change those user additions, deletions, and comments to the general firm name if possible. Um, so that way you have some concept of maybe uh, who is editing it, who is uh, changing things. Um, it makes the, the document even more high quality than, than you would expect. Very good point. Moving on, uh, one of the things we added really is, uh, and this is uh, sort of talks to the level of integration we uh, put our effort into, is, is to move up with uh, Azure Information Protection. Um, not a lot of uh, not a lot of our customers use Azure Information Protection just yet. We have a few uh, customers already using this uh, either either in their labs or in production already. And uh, what we do here is. I had to pick a screenshot of the Azure Information uh, Portal uh, configuration screen because our integration is uh, is, is seamless. Uh, as you deal with Azure uh, AIP protected documents, we do not expose, we do not pop up any extra dialogues than extra dialogues or any other new interaction points uh, apart from what is already present uh, in MetaDAC. The idea here is for seamless support. So. Um, I did try a bit to figure out a, uh, a way to show AIP in metadata, metadata, but the truth of the matter is it's invisible support. So um, the, you, the, we, we support um, Azure information protected documents. Uh, you can have multiple levels of support, but we, we deal with these documents at the firm level. So regardless of uh, all of the protection, we still ensure that there's no metadata leakage while ensuring all that uh, protection is still in place. 
Yeah, I, I agree with that. And one of the feedbacks that we, we get is, you know, uh, they thought Metadata couldn't clean any encrypted um, files. Well, it, it's really challenging to really, you know, clean these encrypted files because there's a possibility of breaking the encryption. But, you know, with this new feature, uh, Metadata can now clean documents encrypted using the Azure uh, Information Protection uh, while ensuring that the encryption is intact. So uh, Metadata um, really makes sure that after uh, uh, decrypting the files or the documents, cleaning the metadata, it decrypts it again and, uh, and again, retains that encryption level. Invisible, invisible powers. Uh, <laughs> moving on to something uh, new that just, just arrived in the um, June 30th release, um, the last day of the second quarter. Uh, incidentally, um, is the capability to manage attachments in line. So this is this has nothing to do with uh, I, I won't say nothing to do with metadata cleaning when I when there is clearly a clean metadata here. But the the, the core functionality here is to help you manage all of your attachments. Um, you can pull in attachments from the DMS as we've already seen, but then you might be dealing with documents that have doc IDs and versions and names that don't really make sense to the end user. So it here is a single position where you can uh, collate all of the uh, documents you want. You can rename them. You can add protection to it. You can convert the documents. And uh, we'll talk a bit about the binders uh, themselves. But it's a one-stop uh, dialogue to uh, manage all of your attachments before uh, you go out. So uh, this is not connected to the send button. We wanted to keep this simple, like the clean reattach, where you get a working area where you can do this and uh, reattach the files. This is part of version five um, right now. Yeah, and we, and we all know what happens when you know you have five or ten attachments on an email, and you may not be able to read the full file name. You don't know what they look like just in that Outlook view that you're normally in. And we've all done it. Okay, I'm going to go remove the attachment, and I have to remember where the location it's saved to go find it again, to rename it, to attach it back to the email. Whereas with this, you know we've taken those hurdles out of the equation. You can attach all your documents and then you can come right into the attachment manager to make sure, you know, your eyes are dotted and T's across more or less. It's named appropriately. You can see the full name um, and then continue going about your, your email flow. Which I and think leads us right into the next one. <laughs> exactly. Very convenient. Uh, it almost seems it was designed this way. Um, <laughs> we, I, I touched upon the binder functionality, and this is, this is sort of like one step further in there. Um, working with our uh, clients, we, we realized that creating a binder almost always uh, requires the binder to be created outside this email, email creation flow. So you need to go uh, use uh, one of the excellent tools that are already out there to create the binder first and then remember to add that binder in. Um, that, that, that's great when you need to do, uh, let's say, one important closing binder or the, the final binder. But if you need to create binders on a regular basis, say at the end of the week, every week, uh, maybe there's a better way to do it. So um, this manage binder um, dialog pops up from the manage binder uh, button uh, in the earlier dialog you saw. And here it really lets you um, name a binder. You, you, can, you can name it or whatever you want after you've uh, set which files you want to add to it. You can add a password to secure it. You can actually add cover pages here. Um, these cover pages can obviously be uh, your templates, so it looks like your document. Um, you can add a table of contents as well as separator pages. A lot of this is driven by user feedback uh, from early testing, and we already have this uh, deployed in a few uh, custom sites where we've gotten excellent feedback back, which we're working to include in the upcoming release. Um, so yeah, so the binder flow again is just put in line, so you don't need to go leave Outlook, go do that, and come back and reattach it, forget where the binders were, that sort of thing. Yeah, and to add to that, not, not only you can uh, place or uh, put the pile files inside a binder, but you can also clean the metadata uh, from those files before you, you put them in the binder. And you can also select a cleaning level, depending on what um, cleaning um, um, action you want to use for, for these uh, files. So a really good addition to this uh, functionality. Um, incidentally, the cleaning metadata was added because we realize uh, when you flatten a uh, Word document, suddenly you c 
can't pick out the track changes or the comments because they just become part of the PDF file. So yeah. the clean metadata is there just so that we don't want metadata leaking anywhere. It, it is still, like I said, I, you can't say it doesn't, that has nothing to do with metadata cleaning. It does, uh, but it is, we, we are mindful of that. Um, the, the, the number two feature that we want to talk about here is um, really uh, from a lot of experience having uh, worked in, uh, in the email uh, security policy flows up to this point. One of the biggest sticking points is when we're talking about instituting uh, data loss prevention policies. So if you're, if you're thinking of stopping an email uh, that has sensitive attachments, you want to be very sure that that policy uh, has no false negatives and no false positives as perfect as possible. And, and one of the obstacles here is to know how the firm reacts to a policy in place. Um, we, I used to be the product manager for uh, the Workshare Protect server, so we've, I've had some uh, experience in this, and I've uh, uh, heard a lot of feedback from customers using that functionality there. And one of the things when we ported all of those uh, functions into Metadata, one of the things we were very uh, sure to add was the capability to just log. And what that means is you can now put in a policy in place, and the policy simply flags that it was fired it does nothing to the email. So there is no real world impact to the email passing through the form, but uh, you now know that there are instances when this policy would have triggered, and you also have notifications going back to the sender. Um, this sort of um, also tests how the firm reacts to a, um, a particular policy violation if it were to happen. This is part of, uh, this is uh, available since uh, MetaDact version 4.7, so it's already in there. Yeah, and this is, I think, huge because in the conversations I always have with with our customers, um, and we talk about this, um, you know, concept of of um, what we call data loss prevention is is the struggle to get users to adopt it, and the struggle that IT has to work through to ensure that important things aren't actually getting blocked, and they have to wake up at two a.m. to release. Something. Um, that's always the biggest struggle and having a feature like this in place allows you to bridge that gap with your end users, with your IT staff to be able to kind of proactively go, hey, this is what's going to come. This is what's about to happen. And we want to make sure that everybody's aware um, of what's coming. And it also, um, you know, I, I think Dennis, you could probably talk about this a lot, but or a lot, a little, um, you know, gives you some extra analytics too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, again, one one of the feedbacks that we get uh, for for this functionality is that they wanted to set up some kind of monitoring um, for uh, for set, for certain security policies. They don't want to block those emails, but they just want to get notified and and uh, and um, uh, let still let those emails go out. So this is one way to set that up. You know, set set the security um, DLP policy and set it to just log so that you get a notification at the same time the users are notified as well that a certain policy is triggered but again their emails are going to go out um an interesting um a bit of a conversation feedback that we got was um usually when you put something in like this there's usually a spike in notifications because it's it's a new system it's, it's catching a lot of old behaviors but that spike sort of goes away because now uh, end users know all uh, things that they were doing um, by mistake or without thinking too much is now there's somebody watching this and that they know that yep, this is no exactly. longer a good thing to do. So uh, it, it's sort of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. It, putting this in sort of makes the problem go away. It's, it's actually quite interesting in that sense. And uh, which sort of brings us to our number one feature we want to talk about is the ability to sort of uh, be uh, more th a, a, a full full compass uh, security solution here in terms of uh, in terms of email going out. Um, I, I had a quick think about this. We were, I was coming at this from a uh, DLP perspective uh, at first because um, that that's where I've had uh, the most amount of conversations. But then I realized. Uh, there are different touch points within uh, Metadata uh, today, which lets you uh, have different levels of uh, of security. When when you put them all up active together, uh, it, it's a really complete solution. The first thing I want to talk about is I, I say quarantine uh, emails of interest. 
This is basically an extension of DLP functionality when something actually happens. I'm talking about more than just logging, you're actually going to hold emails back. Uh, this is a server-side solution. Um, you, you, can, you can set up policies. We've talked about this at, uh, at length in earlier sessions. Um, you, can, you can have emails held for review. The second one is, is more, we talked about sensitive data handling. This is on the desktop, and this is uh, for all emails, not emails with any attachments. It, it, it's at the, at the point of send. Uh, you've got the sensitive data handling kicking in, so you can now warn if there are policies about to be breached. You can let the uh, sender know that's probably, not, that's probably not a good idea. And finally, I do have audit reports and alerts here. We have... Um, we have extensive uh, logging in Metadata already. You, you can go back in time and then figure out what's happened. Uh, you can set up policies. But something we're working on is 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 to pull in more reporting capability. Um, we've we've had as part of the Workshare product suite, we've had Workshare Tech Server. We are, I am working with my team to uh, pull uh, a lot of that functionality into Metadata. So now you can you can have the entire gamut. You can you can have reports on what happened uh, you can go back in time 30 days 90 days and then figure out what policies you need to put into place to make things go away uh, you can warn people uh, from uh, about things happening we've got that entire gamut of functionality coming into metadata here yeah i think one of the uh, feedback that we get with metadata server is the the, the logging capability. So they always say, uh, you know what, you've got the best logging capability for a Metadoc server solution because you really have um, all the details that you need in terms of troubleshooting, you know, uh, running a report, audits, things like that. You can generate those um, quality reports and logs within the uh, Metadoc uh, server console. So it's, it's really good that we have this um, all integrated in, in just uh, one uh, admin console. So that sort of brings us to the end of our top 10 features in Metadata. So just, just reiterate, we did start at Metadata Cleaning. Metadata Cleaning is very much uh, one of our core features. Um, we spend a lot of time improving. We get a lot of feedback. We get uh, documents that don't clean as well. So we do put in the effort to keep our cleaning engine uh, up to date and as quick as possible. But we have been spending a lot of time. We have been spending time expanding Metadata, Metadata past just metadata cleaning. So we've got, uh, we're looking at it uh, from an email workflow management perspective. We're looking at it from an email security perspective. Um, as, as we uh, move forward, we want to be, we want Metadax to be that one uh, guardian angel on your shoulder to help you get be the best version of you when, you, when you're working on sensitive documents. Exactly. I mean, I, I think it was really, you know, if we would have talked about this, you know, a few years ago, uh, we would have had probably top 10 features of Metadata around cleaning metadata. Um, so, so hopefully um, everybody that's watching this, you see how um, this product um, is kind of evolving. Um, and you know, it's not just about metadata anymore. Um, it's about that whole email experience. Lovely, and we are right on time. Um, thank you very much, guys. Uh, I'm going to, uh, we're gonna close the session today, but we will see you soon on the Bye-bye. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye.